Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act on that. Hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the trap dog. Giving them all. Like a million bucks, but things in its cups. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. Listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands Listen to the voice now. Come on, dig me. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. One more time, partner. Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, how amazing is that? How good has God been to me? How good has he been to you? Just check yourself sometimes. Just sit up and just, just run a survey. Just look at your life where it's at. It might not be where you want it to be, but that's probably some decisions you made. But really, though, in spite of all the crazy mistakes I done made, I mean, man, I I I, I look back at some of the decisions I done came up with, and, and and man, it's 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 just amazing he let me live. I mean, it's it's and 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 to exist the way I exist, it it does nothing but grace. Mercy, favor, all that is. That's what my mama praying for me when I wasn't praying for myself. That had to be it because, man, I can truly tell you, I have made enough mistakes, man, stuff you would never even know about and recovered from them all. You can too. And I don't care what you've done. Marvin Sapp has a song out that says, he saw the best in me when everyone else around me could only see the worst in me. You know, that that's an important song, man. Especially, you know, I want to talk to men today because, uh, man, being a man is so, so difficult. <laughs> Please know, it, it, it has been my quest ever since I was a little boy. My father had one ambition. Son, I don't care what you do, but when I get through raising you, you will be a man. That's all I want you to be. He never cared what I did for a living. It never made a difference to him. You're going to be a man. Manhood is difficult. Now, ladies, that's listening to this. I'm not saying womanhood ain't. I don't know what it takes to be a woman. So, you know, I'm, I'm, but I do know exactly what it takes to be a man. So, you know, sometimes when you talk to people on the radio, you have to preface things because people are just go, he trying to make it look like womanhood ain't. No, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just talking to men today to explain to them that they ain't by themselves and struggling trying to figure this thing out, that you are not alone in your quest for manhood, that it's difficult. But I'm, I, I got I, I to gotta tell you, man, um, manhood is that kind of difficult, and it becomes even more compounded if a young boy does not have a male role model. I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it again. A young boy without a male role model 
is like an explorer without a map. Well, I have a suggestion for everybody that's struggling with manhood and all of the men out there that are men. This message is for all of us and it's for me too. You know, I was listening to Joyce Myers the other day and um, she made a statement. She said, sometimes you got to do the right thing even when it feels wrong. You know, one of the difficulties of manhood is peer pressure and the misguided principles of manhood. See, what God wants us to be as men and what we believe manhood is, is is sometimes two different things. I'll give you an example. I wrote this book for women, right? And um, I was telling them the three ways that a man shows his love. And I called them three P's. We profess, we protect, and we provide. Every man who is a man, that's how he exhibits love. We're not talky-talky, comforting, we're not great nurturers, but when it comes down to to it, what we all want to do, what is in our DNA, is to profess our love for something, you as a woman, to protect you as a woman, and to provide for you as a woman. That's in our DNA. Now, sometimes that gets messed up, and I'll give you an example. Sometimes when a boy doesn't have the proper real role model in his life, he takes that principle of love that we all possess in us, every man, the professing part, the protecting and the, and the, and the providing part, and we misplay it. That's why gangs exist. Gangs exist off those three principles. What's the first thing a gang member do? He profess. He claim a hood. That's the first thing he do. This is my neighborhood. I'm Deuce Trey. I'm Triple H. I'm Doop de Doop. I'm purple, I'm, I'm red, I'm blue. The first thing they do is claim. That's professing. That's how we show our love. But it's misguided, though. Now we professing something that ain't even good for us. Your hood, your gang, your clique. Now, guess what? Now we got to protect it. So now, as a protection part of our love, here we go. You come down here, we going to do this to you. You go over there, they going to do that to you. You protect your hood. This your turf. This all you got. You ain't, ain't nobody coming down here with blue on. Can't nobody come over here with red on. You can't come over here with purple on. You can't come over here with black and gold on. And we and we protect that because that's in our DNA. And then what's the third thing? We provide. So guess what the gang need? Money. Guess what we do? We selling drugs. We selling women. We selling guns. It go back to the same thing, man. I don't know how God gave it to me that way when I was writing the book, but he showed it to me along the way. That's how men love. Well, when you don't have a role model in your life, guess what? Now that love is misplaced. It's misguided. It's off track. Ain't no man told you that really you're supposed to take this love and give it to a woman. You're really supposed to profess, protect, and provide for a woman. Not your gang set. Now you professing your hood, repping a color, you protecting your territory, shooting people, driving by, coming over you on your street, and then you provide. Now you out here selling drugs and guns for the same thing. When a boy does not have a male role model, he has a misguided way of looking at manhood. Here's the deal. See, God created all of us in his image. That means he's put some of our DNA in him. That's why it's in your DNA to profess, protect, and provide. Because guess what? That's what God do for us. Because we his children. I'm just talking to men right now. I'm just telling you, man, I had to wake up about five years ago. I wasn't doing what God wanted me to do. And then he shook me. He said, man, I'm going to bring about some changes in your life. I'm going to cause some things to happen that's going to put you in a position. And this time you're going to listen to me. Because if you don't, you're going to keep living in this pain you've been in. But you put yourself in this pain. I owe no blame to no one else but myself. Please know I know that. And that's how we, you really get to manhood when you figure out what you done done wrong. You can't blame this on none of your exes because you a man. You can't go, my ex did this. No, no. You a man, partner. You got to take responsibility for yours and yours alone. If you got kids, you got to get to them some kind of way. Write them a letter. Send them the money. If she won't let you see it for the money, whatever. Send the money to her mama. Do what you're supposed to do as a man. Do what God wants you to do, man, because he not letting us off the hook for what we supposed to be just because you ain't doing it. And if you do it, you turn your life around. Just hollering at the fellas today, that's all. Sorry about that. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, normally I ask you for your attention, but by now I think you understand the drill. So how about it? How you feel this morning? You good? Mm-hmm. Are you grateful? Yes. Did you tell him that you appreciate it? Yes. Did you say thank you? Yes, it's just yes I a did. simple thing, y'all. Mm-hmm. It's just a real, real simple thing. It really will affect your attitude. Once you affect your attitude, you have now made an adaptation and an adjustment to your altitude. And all of that starts with gratitude. Your gratitude affects your attitude, which changes your altitude. You thank you more, you get more. It's just a simple process, man. I just want to invite y'all to join in on what is on that every day this morning. Uh, that's what's happening on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I'm grateful. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. The lesson I've learned in 2023 that has carried me over through in, 220, uh, in 2024 is that I am so battle-tested now that I know that all my faith is in my God and my God alone. And I know for sure right now, because he's shown it to me time and time again, that there is no weapon formed against me that shall prosper. And I'll Hmm. get a chance to refute every single tongue. All I got to do is be still and watch. The show ain't over just because it started. Ladies and gentlemen, Mm -hmm. this here just started. Steve Hmm. Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Farrell, Mississippi Monica, Junior, the wonderful Junior, KLS, y'all, Killer One Space, Mm -hmm. and the legend that is Nephew Tom. Mm -hmm. Junior? Yes, sir. Yeah. What is going on in your mind today? You know what, Uncle? I'm glad you said that because, you know, I've started to thank God for the bad times. See, even for the bad times, I'm grateful because even stuff I don't even understand. Because that's where I'm at right now. There's some things happening to me I don't really understand. I'm thanking him for that. I really am thanking him yeah. for that. I'm thanking him for things that I can't even control, like, like, like my life. I don't control my life no more. I'm thanking him for that, though, anyway. Somebody else in control yeah. of my life. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I have no say-so. I am a former shell of myself. I don't even belong to me. Yes. I have no idea who I am. I'm just going to thank yeah. them anyway. Okay? I got a better half, but they run everything, Lord. I have no say-so. Yeah. But thank you, God, anyway. Thank you, God. Yeah. I, ain't picked a bin- yeah. I ain't picked a dinner menu in months. I ain't picked dinner. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. yes. But I'm thanking them anyway. You know what else? Yeah. I have never decided all week where we going. I never decided where we going on a holiday trip. Never made a plan. But I want to thank you for it anyway. I didn't even get to pick right. the rental car. Right. <laughs> didn't even are get to pick happy it. Are you happy? I'm happy. Sure, I'm Junior, thankful. Do you know how I'm good thankful that for the is, bad man? Days. Yeah. See, that's, that's a good thing, man. Not to have to make decisions anymore. Mm-hmm. Somebody mm-hmm. that took over the decision-making process. All mm-hmm. you got to do is wake up and join in. See, Just you got to look in. at it like that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Just the rent a car. You don't on. like Ford, but that's mm-hmm. what you're driving. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you ain't well, got I'm to thankful. pick the vacation, but damn it, you're going. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, yeah. Lord. Thank you, Junior. That's what you're Thank you, Lord. Do. No, thank you, guys. Yeah. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, what we will doing? run that prank back what right after it? this. What are you doing? <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Nev? Uh, we got no hair weaves, Shirley. No hair weaves. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. All right. All right. We're talking natural hair up in here. Let's go. Let's go, cat dog. No hair right. weaves. Hello? Uh, hello. I'm trying to reach Risa, please. Risa. This is she. Hi, Risa. My name is Byron. Byron from the job. How are you? I'm okay. How are you, Byron? I'm good. Listen, I hate to call you uh, after hours at your home, but there has been some uh, new issues that will be going into effect as of tomorrow morning. And we're calling everyone, letting them know the new changes that have been um, issued that will take effect first thing tomorrow morning. So we're giving everyone a call, so don't be alarmed. It's just uh, giving you a call, letting you know what the uh, what the higher-ups have changed, okay? Okay, that's no problem. i got a few minutes to listen. Okay. As of tomorrow, what's going to happen is when you guys come in, you'll be issued a new key card, and that particular card will actually uh, register when you come in and go out, okay? Okay. All right. Second one is there will no longer be any personal Internet 
at the job any longer. You won't be able, they're actually putting a block on all computers. All the computers will no longer be able to go to a lot of these sites that you guys go to that you've been, um, that's been available here in the past. Okay? Okay. All right. The last one is, uh, Risa, do you, um, do you wear a hair weave? What? Do you wear a hair weave or a wig? Yes. Okay. Well, here's one thing, uh, and hopefully you can get this changed by tomorrow. There's no weaves or hair or, or wigs going to be allowed uh, at the job site from this point on. So as of tomorrow morning, everyone must be wearing their natural hair. You're joking. Uh, no. These are the uh, issues that are going to be that are instated, and these are going to take effect as of tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. What does hair weave to have to do with any of these changes? The first two I can understand. Punching in and being on the Internet, yes, that's something that, that corporate. But hair weave and wigs, I, you're getting into I, I, changing I people's appearance. The higher appearance ups are, are, they're looking down upon it. Uh, wigs and hair weaves, they have to go. So I'm assuming that if you, like you said, you do have one, I suggest uh, it come out that you start easily. taking it down now and prepare your hair to be natural as you come into work tomorrow. I'm not taking my hair down. I've been here seven years, and I've dealt with all the changes that y'all have made, but there's no way that I'm taking my hair weave down. I'm sorry. What's your name, Byron? Uh, yes, my name is Byron. And, um, I'm sorry. Let's get back to your weave. This has You're going to have to do something. Is there someone that you can call tonight to help you get your hair down and so you can look presentable with your natural hair tomorrow? No, my weave costs over two, three hundred dollars and I'm not about to take that down. I mean, it takes a long time to take that down. Okay. Uh, I mean, is this something maybe you can take it down and just wear it on the weekends? Because as of now, you're not going to be allowed to actually wear it uh, on the property. And how will you know if someone has weave or not? Are you going to do head checks or something? This uh, some Okay, I'm, ma'am, I'm not quite sure what they're going to do to check it, but by you telling me that you you have a weave, then I have to write it down that you have confirmed that you do, and we got to make sure that tomorrow morning you're not wearing one. But you don't know what my natural hair looks like from my weave. Uh, you heard how much I pay for it, so it's a good weave. Ma'am, it's not about how good, you know, the quality of your weave or anything. They don't want it. They want natural hair. I don't know what that means, but they're going natural. They're going green. They're going natural. I don't know what it is. They're going natural, and so are you. Tomorrow morning, you need to come in with your hair completely down, okay? I won't do it. I'm not taking my weave down. Okay. Then, uh, what then, is that? Y'all going to write me up or something? Okay, ma'am, do you not want your job? Yeah, I want my job, but this don't make no sense. You talking about personal appearance? I can understand y'all have a dress code and enforcing a dress code. That's one thing. But t but uh, telling somebody to change their hair, you lost your mind, man. You're crazy. Ma'am, I'm not good. I have other people that I have to call. Bottom line is, get your hair down and get your butt into work tomorrow, and let's not go back and forth anymore, okay? Well, listen, Byron, you're a lost mind if you're thinking I'm taking my weave out. I'm not taking out at all. Risa is coming up in there with her hair, and I'm going to sit down at my desk and do my job. Y'all going to have to drag me out that time some weave. You done lost your mind, you and your powers that be or whoever they may be. You tell them that I said that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, listen, are you telling me that you're coming in regardless with your hair on? You right? That's what I just said. Okay, you calling okay. me at home are you, are with you, this are you, are you then, then we need to, why don't you go ahead and bring some boxes in, because you may as I'm well pack your stuff. I'm not you bring this Ma'am, I don't want to have to pack you, get your stuff and box it up, and you're losing your job because you can't take what your You know what? Down. You can do that, because I'm going to call the, the news station and tell them you're dragging me out of the behind some weeds. Who wrong? You wrong. You wrong. You stupid behind some Weed. Are you going? You need to watch your language, young lady. Why I need to watch my language? I'm at home. You call me on my own home phone on my time. I'm at my house. I'm not on your clock. I say what I want to say on my phone. Okay. Can I say what I want on my phone, and then I'll let you go, and you can come in to, to work any way you want to tomorrow. What is it, Bob? And what else you got to say? I want to tell I'm you fed this. Up. I want to tell you that your girlfriend Jennifer at your job got me to prank phone call you. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. What the <laughs> you just said? <laughs> I know you. This is, <laughs> hey, Reese, this is this is nephew Tommy, baby, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Jennifer, your coworker, got me to prank oh, phone call you. You got my blood pressure up. I'm going <laughs> to.
kill that <laughs> tomorrow, and I'm going to pull her weave out. You you want to come down there and watch me drag her out of the job? I'm mad. She wrong for this <laughs> You know I got high blood pressure. You can't be doing that to me behind my weave. I pay too much money. I definitely want to be spending on my kids. Oh, ain't nothing like a black woman and her hair. <laughs> oh man okay baby i got one more thing to ask you girl what is the baddest and i mean the baddest radio show in the land <laughs> well after this prank it has to be the steve harvey morning show god <laughs> <laughs> no hair weaves i am accepting hair weaves at the show I added in Jacksonville, Florida, oh. at the Comedy oh. Zone. That's oh, nice. One more show. Okay. That's what I Yeah, oh. 7 o'clock, oh. 7 o'clock on Sunday. Go on on, wear your hair. I'm going to let you in now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nephew. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO with our Chief Love Officer. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Tina Knowles celebrated her 70th birthday in Malibu, surrounded by her loved ones. Sanan Lathan will star as Miss Cleo in a new scripted series. And the king of funk, Steve, George Clinton, is getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Hell that is yeah. All co- Come yeah. on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. That's all coming up at the top of the hour, but right now it is time to ask the CLO. Juanita and Kenner says, um, I heard the planning, co- I had the planning committee for this year's family reunion, and my mama has X'd more than a few people off my list because she can't get along with anyone. I'm not uninviting any of them. She said she's not coming. So, how do I handle this? Well, this mm. is when lying to your mama uh, comes into effect. Oh, Just oh. say, hey, mama, uh, yeah, yeah I told them not to come. So it's cool. And then your mama come, then they come, and then you just sit back on and enjoy the barbecue. That's all to it. You know, ain't nobody finna get into all that. Now, I ain't studying that. You know, if you don't get along with your family, that's make up. Talk. Mm-hmm. Work it out. What y'all gonna do? Like my daddy said, get over it or die mad. Y'all kill me with this here, man. Dog, dog, dog. Hey, dog, we can't get along with nobody. You can't get along with your family. You can't go get along with our peers. You can't go along with your co-workers. You can't go along with the people down at your church. You don't, you don't like people at your job. Man, stop. Talk it out. Yes. All right. Moving on to Cherry in Brooklyn. Cherry writes, my 42-year-old friend moved in with me after she got laid off and things were fine until she had sex with one of my exes in my house. House. She didn't know, but he knew exactly what he was doing. Should I tell her about that loser or let her find out for herself, basically? Well, if if this person is in your house, mm-hmm. see, I think you have the right to say, hey, listen, you could do anything you want to do, but I just want to let you know that's an ex of mine. And I would appreciate it. He not be back in my house. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like I that. Think, I think I think she should say that. Mm-hmm. Now, look, I'm not trying to run your life. I, mm-hmm. I don't care about him anymore. But he tell you how doggish he is. He knows whose house this is. Mm-hmm. He was trying. I know that. you didn't know, and I ain't really mad at you. But he knew, and I don't care what you do with him, but I just prefer that he not be in my house anymore. Mm-hmm. I think she has the right to say that. Cause you ain't Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. Now you show sure coming right. up in the crib. I'm paying mm-hmm. for this. You think you're yeah. going to come up here? Right. I'll tell you what. Get naked again and see what happens. Oh, yeah. yeah, he really is a loser for doing that. Yeah. He really He's is. picking mm-hmm. buckshot out your ass, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, moving on to Kenya and Indianapolis. Kenya said, um, I- I met a nerdy man online and he attracted me because he was smart. I fell in love with him over the sex. He is wild and freaky and nothing is off limits. I want his personality to match his lovemaking. So how do I turn him into a sexy, cool guy? <laughs> You, you ain't finna do it. What? That little nerd done done some calculations and then figured some things out. And that's how you getting all that. He up for anything, game for anything, and do anything. Leave that man alone. See, let me tell you something. If you tamper with his personality, he may take it somewhere else. You got a nerd. He ain't finna be no super cool dude. He's square. 
But when he it, but when he in that frying that bacon though, it's more cold. He got that grease <laughs> popping. It's hot, and all of it is based on some type of scientific algorithm, oh, some type wow. of calculation. I don't know what he doing, but he didn't figure that out. Why you want to mess with that? Mm-hmm. You know, we feel See, all like you we gotta always do is have make to change, this fool man. think he mm-hmm. cool. Now you're mm-hmm. gonna have a whole nother problem. You got a good man, you done fell in love with him, go on with him, man, man the square. But you know, women always want to change them. Trying to change, change the guy. Okay, go ahead. Uh-huh. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Change him into something you can't handle no more. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Okay. All right. All right, last one. Once Steve. you make a well, I'm gonna tell you something right now. Once a man, once you change a man into thinking he cool, mm-hmm. he got to see, he got to show it to people now. See. <laughs> How cool he put really it on display is. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> to himself. Yeah, cool <laughs> show. Uh-huh. This is valuable stuff right here. Uh-huh. All right, last one. This is from Dalla in Columbus. Dalla says, "I was seeing two women, one older and one younger." The older one found out about the young one and tried to jump on her. I'm dating the young woman now. The older chick is still harassing my girl. Why is she mad at her but not at me? Is this a woman saying this? Mm-mm. His name is Dollar. Dollar. It's a guy. This the dude in the middle. Uh-huh. Dollar sound like a uh, dollar. Oh, you mean Dollar? You talking about like Dollar, dollar Bill. Bill? Like Dollar Bill, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Darla. My bad. No, 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 oh. Dollar. Like yeah. dollar dollar oh, bill, well, y'all. Well, the reason she try, he trying to she trying to jump on her is cause she's stupid. <laughs> See, okay. you, you don't understand. See, what you jumping on the young girl for? The right. young girl doing the same thing you doing. Mm-hmm. Right, right. He doing both of y'all. Mm-hmm. But ain't that the problem with women though? See, y'all want to blame the other woman when really. The person that took your vow and made a commitment to you was the man. What you jumping on her for? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he probably told her the same thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all, y'all got to learn how to direct this anger in a proper challenge. Y'all just can't go off all willy nilly. Just everybody get a shot of anger. <laughs> oh, y'all got, y'all got to, you know, have this directed anger. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Anger management. You need counseling. <laughs> Oh, really? That's what they need. <laughs> well, yeah, she yeah, just need to leave him alone. He don't uh-huh. want you, baby. <laughs> just, but I'm surprised. You. I mean, you know, asked... that, but Carla, that's too much like common sense now. You oh, know, okay. I am surprised off he the asked. Internet now. Why isn't she mad at me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, what you, that's what Steve just said. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's surprising. All right. Have you guys ever done that before? Seen a young woman, two women at a time, a young one and an older one? I was in a monastery. I've been saved my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You guys right. got scared on that one? <laughs> Man, okay, do you know That's anyone? Either. Do you know nope. anyone who's ever done nope. that before? I ain't going to do it to nobody either. Nope. <laughs> Hell no. no. All my friends is pure as the driven snow. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. No. You've never fantasized Crazy. about it. Golly. Nope. Why would I sit up in here and, and let my imagination take me places I ain't supposed to go? <laughs> I would yeah. never. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. Have you mm. ever dated an older woman before? No. Is that what? No. The goal Have you ever grandma? dated no. before? What is I was 12. Right? I was 12. She was 15. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> nah. You were 12. All right. She was 15. I, I, I dated was. my Sunday school teacher in my mind, Ike Harris. I, 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 I <laughs> he kills me with the name. Years old. <laughs> Thank you, CLO. <laughs> on one Sunday. And I, Coming up next, and entertainment news. CBS we'll get into that CBS right after this. Goals. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Steve Harvey Nation, Shaquille O'Neal's All-Star Comedy Jam takes over Resorts World Las Vegas February 9th and 10th over the big game weekend in Vegas. The Comedy Showcase is hosted by Dion Cole and features Theo Hughley, uh, Earthquake, and Desi Banks, among others. You could win a trip for two to attend the show on February 9th, and this includes round-trip coach airfare and a two-night hotel stay. You can enter now and get rules at steveharveyfm.com. It is sponsored by AEG Presents and Resorts World Las Vegas. Again, that's steveharveyfm.com for all the info. Good luck, everybody. All right, moving on to entertainment news. Miss Tina Knowles, we have to say congratulations. Happy birthday. Miss Tina Knowles celebrated her 70th birthday with her friends and family recently. She looks great for 70. Tina posted on IG that she was at her favorite place in the world, that is Malibu Beach, with her loved ones. She wrote, mm. quote, I just got spoiled to death. I even got serenaded by Destiny's Child. How amazing is that? So I just want to thank everyone who sent me flowers, everyone that told me a happy birthday. Um, I got so many well wishes. I got so many bonus children, beautiful bonus children, and I just feel so blessed. I love you guys. So happy belated birthday to Miss Tina Knowles. Yeah. Happy um, birthday, Miss yeah, Knowles. She is yeah. Her birthday. Her birthday is uh, coming up next week, and I wonder if yeah. my wife could arrange for me to be serenaded by Destiny's Child. <laughs> is that what you're looking for? It can for? happen. Of course. <laughs> You had to laugh at that. I almost choked myself <laughs> going there and tell my wife, hey, baby, you've been asking me what I want for my birthday. Don't Destiny Child sing to me. <laughs> See <laughs> what Beyonce got going on on the 17th. <laughs> yeah. Cater to you. Going on. Beyonce near my decade. <laughs> oh, boy. So, do you have anything planned, Steve, for your birthday next week? Uh uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> you know, I'd have so that? many of them. No, I'd, I'd have so many birthdays, man. Like, you know, I'm not one of them people where my birthday lasts four days and a month yeah, and months. all this here. Yeah. I don't do that, man. I just, really, man. Really, I just want to watch, man. I get a cold watch, I'd be happy. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Wrist watch. You want a watch. watch. Okay. Either a either <laughs> cold watch or a cold travel bag. That's all. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's pretty simple, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm simple, man. No, you know how much his travel bag is? <laughs> a lot of time, Max. He just get eight. Y'all know what kind of watch he talking about? Yes. <laughs> He's talking about six yeah. figure watches. That's mm-hmm. what he talking about. Yeah, that's his favorite indulgence. I ain't never knew nobody need to know the damn time like that. That don't make no sense to me. <laughs> hey Tommy, like but my t- can I tell you something? I don't even set my watches. Ain't none of my watches. Set. So you got on a six figure six. watch and ain't got it on the right time? It's it's jewelry. Do you know how many people see? looking for me every damn day? <laughs> Now, you know how many people move me around all day long? I ain't got never know the time. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't got, I ain't never got to know the time. Then, then you got these iPhones in your hand all day. Hell, mm-hmm. they tell you the time. Yep. You just Hell, like to watch it. a hand and all this here and try to calculate. Uh huh. Is that why you like uh, them so much, jewelry? Yeah, I'm just, for me, it's just important to have on a dope watch. Mm-hmm. Just, just for me. With the yeah. other yeah. that's for me and don't care nothing about that. I understand that. Ain't no right. problem. But it's mm-hmm. a couple of things that I that's a like a must for me. Mm-hmm. Watch. Yeah. Cigars. <laughs> but okay. for for six figures, you can get a bell tower. You can get somebody to stand up there and, and, and ring the bell when they hit every hour. <laughs> for six figures, you can get people working up there and everything. You ain't gotta have that on your hand. Six figures. <laughs> 12 o'clock. That's a salary, huh? Dun, dun, that's about a salary. Dun. Yeah. Six damn figures, boy. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, moving on. Uh, you guys remember Miss Cleo, the TV psychic back in the day? Call Her catchphrase, me now. Call me now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, Sanaa Lathan will star as Miss Cleo in a scripted drama series coming to TV. It's based on Miss Cleo's life as a paper call psychic from 1997 to 2003. The series will explore Miss Cleo's rise and fall from stardom, which resulted in a $500 million lawsuit for deceptive advertising. Miss Cleo was not indicted, but the company settled for $5 million. 
So, um, I ain't no way she this. saw that coming. I, I ain't no way she saw that. She did pass away. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Did your homework. That <laughs> definitely shut the joke down I had written just now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tommy said he's mm. surpri- surprised she didn't see that coming, the lawsuit and all of that. You're supposed to have seen that. If you're looking in them crystal balls and in them <laughs> stuff she was doing, yeah, you're supposed to know that. <laughs> you don't see no lawsuit? You've been seeing all this other stuff? You're supposed to see that? Well, Did you ever think second, about I calling Miss Cleo about your future at all? When she Girl, was popping? I was Miss Cleo, I, sure, mm-hmm. I would have spent all my money before I died. Because? Because <laughs> Cause what? Well, if I'm psychic, I know I'm going to die. With okay, it. I knew it. I don't even walk into that. I ain't never called. Just go. <laughs> All right. Uh, later today, uh, Steve, <laughs> funk master George Clinton is getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's an honor of his I artistic. I was in L.A. There we go. God. <laughs> <laughs> Knew it was coming, right? Mm-hmm. This is in honor of his artistic and creative work over the past 40 plus years. Attorney Ben Crump will be present to salute him. We got to say congratulations to George Clinton on this momentous Do You know the bros that's going to be out there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you know the bros that's going to be out there to see that <laughs> frat boy go on in? <laughs> that is awesome. God, dog. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we're going to talk about the top five things that will make you happier in 2024, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so guys, here are the top five habits you should incorporate into your life this year if you want to reach happiness, okay? Number one, if you make to-do lists, stop overloading your to-do lists, okay? Stop doing that. Number two. You guys want to respond? Anybody? If I can get somebody else to not overdo my to-do list, then it wouldn't be that much (laughs) to-do. Your honey-do list. (laughs) That's the problem. Somebody else overloads my list. If honey could get off the damn list. Whatever. (laughs) Stuff to do. Get it done. (laughs) All right. The other one this year to reach happiness is to practice the art of saying no. All right. (laughs) Oh, I've been is. happy there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been happy there. You know That's how to say no. I didn't know. I didn't know how happy I was. Matter of fact, I incorporate hell no. <laughs> <laughs> to the no, no, no. <laughs> All right. Make hell self- no. <laughs> to the no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Make self care a priority. I love Take it. care of yourself. Mm-hmm. I think you guys all okay, do that. Okay, can I tell you something I did yesterday? Mm-hmm. What? what? I, I'm, I'm I'm at this health clinic out, out here, and I was went into this derma appointment. They gave me an abbreviation. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that derma was abbreviation for dermatologist. Uh-huh. Really? But when I got there, you know, the, the 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 clinic does all types of treatments, oxygen, all like this. I'm doing this mm-hmm. longevity thing. And when I got there, it was a derma appointment. It was the fourth one this week, not the different treatments. And yesterday was an hour, 40 minute facial session. I had a mask on, ultra beam lights on my face, exfoliation, extraction. Yes. Yes. Did it, Steve? Love all of that. I was so through with her. <laughs> <laughs> you don't quit touching me. What are you care. doing? I don't want all this. I, I you was, don't even like pedicures. <laughs> it, it's not my thing at all, mm-hmm. man. Just sitting up in here, man. All right. The last thing that can make you guys have a, a good year, be happy this year, is to let go of grudges. Let them go. Ah. Tommy? Mm. Oh. Tommy? I'm sorry. I can't. I'm sorry. I got a bad connection. I can't hear nothing y'all talking about. I can't hear a damn thing y'all talking about. <laughs> let go of grudges. Don't hold grudges. No. I ain't going to hold no grudge, but I do want to say this, though. There is one person this year that if I see them, it'll be on sight. Yeah, it's fully relieved. And this ain't even Then you'll let it go? Sight. <laughs> now, then I'll let it go. Yes. But right there, when I see him, no, I'm going to let both of these go. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> good health, good happiness this year. Coming up next, Roscoe is joining us. Carla is here for Roscoe right after this. You're listening 
to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Carla. Look at him. Yes. He's here waiting Girl. in the wings. <laughs> he got his glasses on. Uh-huh. He's in the building. Yes. You see Come him, on, Junior. Roscoe. You see him, Tommy. Come on, Roscoe. What's happening? Happy New Year. <laughs> What's up, Roscoe? Look at those glasses. Uh, uh-huh. Happy New Year, everybody. What's going on with you, Junior? <laughs> What's happening, Roscoe? My hero. What's up, Miss Simi Shelley? What's going on with Tommy? <laughs> Going on, 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 on. Oh, keep it pure. Carly, Carly, what happened with you? Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New, Happy New Year, Roscoe. Year, Happy New Year. all the oh. queen. Go ahead on and kick it off. Just be <laughs> forgotten. <laughs> yeah, that's a jam right there. Yeah. So, Roscoe, mm-hmm. let's get to it. New uh-huh. Year. A lot of stuff been popping off. I want Pop you, off. yeah, I want you to start off today's segment. You pick yeah. your favorite song that you want to see sing, and I want you to dedicate it to Steve. Give him yeah. something. Well, I wrote original that I never released. Uh-uh. Oh, uh-uh. Okay. wow, what a treat. Oh. Okay. I'm um, sending this out to Steve for all the haters. Okay, go ahead. If they hate on you, when you see them gone, do what you do. Bust them dead in their mouth. <laughs> oh, knock all they damn teeth out. <laughs> oh, lay your hands on lay it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Don't hold nothing back on him. <laughs> and if he should happen to fall in the flow, what? don't hesitate to stomp him so mo. Uh-huh. Oh, what's the love? I never released that. Yeah, well, because there was no hook. There was a too. reason. Yeah, I was I was trying to follow, <laughs> yeah. and then there was no hook. Mm. Yeah, we did nothing right there. That's why I never released it. So I told you it was original, so I didn't want to release it. <laughs> dedicate that to Steve. Okay. You know, so when he find that, whoever he looking for, I heard him say it was on site. <laughs> oh, you heard that? Mm-hmm. I heard that. That's yeah. all. All right. All right, so, now I got that out the way. I'm back now. <laughs> you back. You back. All right. All right. All right. I'm happy. I'm happy. happy. <laughs> I want to hear a little Al Green this morning. Whichever one. Whichever one. Come on, let's go. Love love and happiness. Wait a minute. Something's going wrong. Someone's on the phone. Uh Uh-huh. Three o'clock in the morning. Come on, boy. Yeah. Talking about she can make it right. Dun, dun, dun. Whoa, happiness wins. Come on, Roscoe. You really feel good about somebody. Same, Roscoe. Same. Ain't nothing wrong. <laughs> what? Being in love with someone. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Fire, Roscoe. Oh, Roscoe. <laughs> now I got one more question for you. We are on now in Milwaukee. This is our new, one of our newest affiliates, newest station. Have you ever performed in Milwaukee? And if yeah. so... And if so, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, been in Milwaukee. King Commons up there. King Commons over there. Performing in Milwaukee. Performing the same place. Milwaukee Bucks play. Same place when, when Lou Al Center was up there. <laughs> Take okay. name Green, my dude's Green. bar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah, that was the name Lou Al Center. When he first got up there, he was Milwaukee Bucks. He was Milwaukee, he Lou Al Center. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Let's get to know. I'm, I'm, I'm going up there now. I'm going up there to see that boy, the boy, the boy out of Greece, the Greek freak. You need to write yeah, a song for you him. You can't say his real name. They just call him Yannick Copapanis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roscoe. <laughs> Coming up yeah, next. Well, I ain't get a chance to say anything. Well, I'm a little off this morning. I won't apologize. I, had, I got cold. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Coming up next, tea. prank phone call from the nephew right after <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, I really love our mailman. Not what you think. We'll get into it in just a few. Because right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. Nephew, what you got for us? D-P-C-A. D-P-C-A. Dead person collection agency. Oh, I can't what? stand you. <laughs> See, like, if you owe somebody what? that has passed away, if you owe them some money, that don't mean you don't owe them no more. This is an agency that yes, will come does. after someone has passed and collect on this here. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? No. This is D-P-C-A. That's all I'm saying. Cat dog, if you would, let's get this money. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Daryl, please. Is he? Hi, Daryl. This is uh, Tony with DPCA. We wanted to give you a call. How you doing today? Uh, well, what, what's what's the company? Uh, DPCA. What what that mean? Uh, DPCA is a dead person collection agency. We actually collect uh money from those that have been that have that are deceased, but people still owe them. Are you familiar with um Carlton who passed away six months ago? I know him. Yes, he could do. But uh, what do you want from me, though? Okay, it's been brought to our understanding that you actually owed Mr. Carlton Fisher twelve hundred dollars. Is that correct? Nah, nah. What are you talking about? Nah. Okay, so nah. how? How as, though? As Mr. Okay, let, let me let me get this, this. Let me get a clear understanding here. You actually worked with Mr. Carlton Fisher, correct? Fact, yeah. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So, have you borrowed money from Mr. Carlton Fisher before? Why are you asking, though? I'm, I'm asking you a clear question, sir. Have you borrowed money from Mr. Carlton Fisher before? I don't feel like I should answer, though. It's not your business, though. Um, no, it is my business because I'm with the collection agency, and it's been brought to our attention that you owe $1,200 to him. I don't know what you're talking about. And you didn't even send me no letter, so I don't, I don't no. even know what's going on. Uh, I'll, I'll repeat myself again, sir. My name is Tony. You sent me a letter, though? With, you sent me a letter. I, you sent me a letter, though. No, I, I haven't sent you a letter. I'm, I'm so Tony. I don't know why you call me, then, if you don't send me no letter, though. Okay. Sir, you owe this money to Mr. Fisher. I'm with See, you. I don't understand. Man. I don't understand. You didn't send me no letter, though, and then you're going to call me, though. That doesn't make no sense. Okay. okay. So here's the deal, sir. If you don't pay the 1200 we will come and take something. We will compensate something of the same value. So I'm letting you know. You're send me, no, you you won't even even send me no letter though. If you do that, I'll call the police because you didn't send me no letter though. You know what I'm saying? That just I, makes I, no I'm sense though. What, no, I'm hearing what you're saying, sir. But at the end of the day, now you're not hearing what I'm saying though. You shouldn't even be talking to me right now. You gotta send me a letter though. That's how it is with bills. You did not inform me anything, right? Sir, you owe you owe the twelve hundred dollars, sir. We both know that. You're now. I'm saying you skipping a you skipping a step right now though. That's what I'm no, saying. Okay. You're infringing it, right it now. doesn't You're matter infringing. about the steps, sir. You know what you owe, and, and I'm just going to let you know. I'm not going to go back and forth with you. I'm going to let you know this: we will come and compensate something of the same value. You twelve hundred. I'll let you know, not, but I'll let you know first, though. You cannot do anything without sending a letter. You did not send me no letter. You didn't send me no nothing, though. You call okay. me. You harassing me right about now without even sending me no letter. I'm saying like this: is the deal. This is what happened. This is when it's due. Yada yada. You didn't even do that. Shit. Okay. So let me let me say this to you. We do know that you have a 2017 pickup truck. We do. Now you threaten me. You threaten me. You threaten me. I'm just know? letting I'm letting you know we're picking up something now, of right? the same value or more. Okay. You threaten so, me now. That's not that's bullshit. You threaten me now. You didn't even send me no letter. You you just call me up saying like I owe you now. You didn't even give me no date. Like this makes no sense though. Sir, this is DPCA. This is what we do. If someone passes I, I away. Care. I don't care. If you're, you're a government agency. You should be sending nope. me a letter. Sir, you owe Mr. Fisher $1,200. He's now deceased. We are going to collect this money, or we're going to collect but something of the same But what I'm saying is you skip a step. You skip a step. You did, not, you did not inform me that I owed money to him. You just tell me right now on the phone. You should supposed to send a letter, though. Sir, do you want to send us, send us the money, or do you want me to pick up? I don't truck? even know what you're talking about, though. Are you talking about my truck? You talking about my truck? I, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. No, we're not. You're not touching my truck right about now. You know what I'm saying? Now, yo, yo, that's it. We done. We done. If you come I, my truck, 
I'm going to f*** with you. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? I don't care what it's your... It's, it's either $1,200. It's 1200 I don't give a f***, dude. Yo, yo, yo. I'm telling you right now, you didn't send me no letter. Now I'm angry. Now you're going to turn me on your truck. You come at me, I will come at you hard. You know what I'm saying? Baseball bats, all that. Shit. Don't f*** with me. Don't f*** with me. You get jumped. I'll jump you. I'll jump you. I'll take your truck. You hear me? You'll stay the f*** away from me. Sir. I'm not playing I'm right now. I'm not, I'm not playing either, sir. Are you registered? Yo, yo, you, yo, yo, are you listening, though? You I'm, I'm listening to you. Are you listening to me? You're the person you that owns. You don't know the type of dude I am, man. I, I, you don't, yo, you sound mad comfortable right about now. Good. Don't be uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, I'm going to let you know this. If I don't get this money by today, then, then you might as well start not sleeping at night because there's a strong possibility what? What? your car might what? Your car what? Might not be there in a minute. Your car, I'm, 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 I'm saying it as clear as possible, sir. $1,200 or your car, your truck may not be there in the morning. This is your call. Do you want to be there after the next morning, though? What are you trying you know what to what say? Saying? What are you trying No, tell me what you're trying to say. What are you here? What you heard? What you heard? What you heard from me? Okay. Exactly. Okay, Don't can, f- with me, dude. When can, yeah. when can we expect, when can we expect the $1,200? I'm telling you right about now. Don't f with my car. I'm done with that. Shit, all right? I'm done with you. Don't f with my car. Don't f with my car. Don't f okay. with my car. Don't wanna f you. Don't call me back, all right? I'm done. Mother hung up. Call him back. Call him back, man. Call him back. Who is hey, man, who you think who you think you hanging up on, man? Who you think you hanging up on? You call me again? You call me again? You damn right. You call I'm calling me again? You again. I'm waiting on the twelve hundred dollars. Okay? Now, Yo, you I have... told you this. I told you. I told you that. Now, now you're getting me angry, though. Now you're getting me angry, though. I told you this. Don't call me, all right? Send me the letter. You don't send me the letter? Now you're talking about taking my truck? I'll f*** you up. Okay. Dead ass. Okay. I'll f*** you up. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, though? What are you going to do? I'm going to tell you right I'm now. I'm going to tell you right now. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to let, I'm gonna let gonna Tommy do? come get the truck. I'm going to let Tommy come get the truck. Who? I'm going to let Tommy come get the truck. I don't know who Tommy is. Uh, which Tommy? Um, Tommy who? Tommy. Tommy, baby. Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. Your boy Trevor at your job got me to prank phone call you. Ah, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he always be listening to y'all, too, man. Damn. <laughs> I got you. Ah, oh, baby. Ah, oh, man. I hope I told all the hairs. I hope my parole officer ain't hearing right now, man. <laughs> you on parole? Uh, I, I, I'm, yeah, no comment. <laughs> okay, all right. No Come comment. On, there, no not, comment. there you go. No I'll tell you what, this this is the only comment I want. Tell me this. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land, baby? Give it to me. Who is it? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. Y'all a bunch of crazy motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. DPCA, uh-huh. Dead Personal Collection Agency. <laughs> all right, let's, let me see if I can wrap it all up. Um, tonight on the OWN Network, all right, mm-hmm. it premieres Ready to Love Fort Come Worth. On. You don't want to miss that. Ready to Love Fort Worth. That's coming on tonight, okay? Mm-hmm. Catch me tonight. Now, if you in Jacksonville, don't worry about that. You watch that later, okay? Now, Monday morning, Martin Luther King weekend, I uh-huh. will be in Atlanta running a 5K with the Shepherd's House. We have teamed up. They teamed up with Miles of Giving when we give back to Wounded Warriors, and I am running a 5K run. As what soon as I get off work, because he ain't going to let me off work. He already explained that I can't be getting off to do nothing. <laughs> All right. <Yeah>. So, all right. <laughs> Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter. The subject is, I really love our mailman. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to SteveRVFM.com. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, this one right here could be yours. Mm Mm-hmm. You never know. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, I really love our mailman. 
Dear Stephen Shirley, my husband of 14 years must be losing his mind because he cheated on me once and I took him back, so he's got to be crazy to do it again at this stage of our lives. We got our marriage back on track after his affair, and I haven't I hadn't suspected anything else was going on until November. He started going to bed early and getting up before I got up so we couldn't have sex. My intuition told me to keep an eye on him, and my intuition intuition never fails. My husband is cheating again, and the woman lives in Maryland. They met in the airport when he went to see his dad in October. My husband has gone to see his dad at least six times since then because his dad has been in and out of the hospital. I bet you want to know how I found all of this out. Well, it was our mailman that indirectly exposed him. See, what had happened was my husband used to have a P.O. box and he closed it, but he forgot to forward his mail, so it was piling up at the post office. Our sweet mailman put all of his mail in a box and he brought it to our house. He said he figured my man, my husband, would want all of his mail. I went out, um, I, I sat out on our front porch in my robe and slowly opened each envelope. The Maryland woman had sent a Christmas card to my husband saying she couldn't wait for him to jingle her bells. She sent another card with a picture of her and a dog on it. There was a credit card statement with charges made only in Maryland. And there was a cell phone bill, so I guess he has another phone. He swears he's not seeing her anymore. Should I believe him or should I go to Maryland with him next time? Can he be trusted? I love the mailman for doing this, but my husband wants him fired. Okay, here's a question. If your husband's not guilty of anything... If he stopped all of this, why why does he want the mailman fired? I mean, the mailman's job is to d- deliver mail, right? And he did that. And now your husband wants him out, out of his job? You know that doesn't make sense. Uh, it, it's not right, <laughs> no matter how you look at it. You talked about trusting your intuition in the letter and how it has never failed you. Well, why are you doubting yourself now? Plus, you've been through his cheating before, so you already know the signs. Do not doubt yourself. No, you shouldn't believe him. He's blaming the mailman for bringing you the mail. Again, that's the mailman's job. You know what it is. You said he swears he's not seeing her anymore. Anymore? Uh, That right there, to me, says it all. He's broken the trust again in your relationship. And if you keep taking him back, he'll probably keep cheating because you're going to just take him back anyway. You even have credit card and cell phone bill receipts. You have all the proof you need. Steve? Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the letter is about. I'm trying to mm-hmm. figure out what it's for. What do, what advice does she want from us? Mm-hmm. What does she need to hear from us? What I, I don't understand what the writing of the letter is even about. Right. Everything that you need to know, you have the information. I, I don't even understand. Okay, let me let let's try. You've been married 14 years ago. Uh, your husband cheated on you once. You took him back. So now you say he didn't got crazy, so he doing it again. After you got your marriage on track, after his affair, I hadn't uh, suspected anything else was going on until November. Now, he started going to bed early and getting up before I got up so we couldn't have sex. Mm. Okay. All right. What? What? Then my intuition told me to keep an eye on him, and my intuition never fails me. Okay, cool. If your intuition told you to keep an eye on him, and your intuition never fails you, why are we typing this damn letter? (laughs) I'm just not understanding. Because I don't even have your intuition, and I'm already with you. (laughs) Okay, here we go. My husband is cheating again, and the woman lives in Maryland. Now, listen to this right here. They met in the airport when he went to see his dad in October. And how the hell do you know that? This intuition you got, is it psychic? Because how do you even know that? I don't even know how you would know that information. The only way you would know this information is your husband would have had to have told you this. 
unless somewhere in these letters you discovered this information. I, <laughs> they met in the airport on when he was going to see his dad. My husband is going to see his dad at least six times since then because his dad has been in and out of the hospital. He ain't went there six times, though, because his daddy been in and out the hospital. You know, normally if somebody's sick, get out the hospital, you go cool. You ain't got to go see him. He'd have been six times. <laughs> Where they live? <laughs> Where did they live? <laughs> Now, if he live in the DMV, going over to Maryland ain't nothing. But if he live in Georgia, that's a trip. Now, at this point in the letter, I'm going to stop because we're going to come back. Now, normally at this juncture right here, when they say the mailman brought it to the house, and then the title of the letter is, I really love our mailman. I'm thinking, as most mailmen, that he been dropping off packages. Yeah, yeah. We'll find out when we come back. All right. Thank you, Steve. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, I really love our mailman. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject is, I really love our mailman. Well, this letter is a deceptive letter, but she's got a husband that's cheating on her. They've been married 14 times. She took him back, but now she say he crazy because he doing it again. And uh, this time, uh, she hadn't suspected anything until November, and he started waking up early before she got out to bed so they wouldn't have sex in the morning. Okay, I don't know what that's about. And then she says, my tuition never fails me. My intuition never fails me. And she think he's cheating again because she say, and the woman lives in Maryland, and they met in the airport when he went to see his daddy in October. Now, how you know this information, I don't know, but later on you tell us, I guess you all want to know how I found all this out, and you damn skippy we do, because that ain't no information. I would see him walking in the house going, hey, baby, you know, I met this fine chick in the airport. I was going to see daddy. You know, daddy ass sick a lot. And I, went to see that. I was in the airport sitting there waiting on me. You should have seen this thing when she walked up. Mm. Hey, I I said, Lord, I'm mercy. <laughs> look at this gift from God. I'm pretty sure he didn't say that. that so did. anyway, um, uh, well, it was our mailman that indirectly exposed him. See, he, my husband used to have a P.O. box, and then he closed it, but he forgot to forward his mail, so it was piling up at the post office. Our sweet mailman put all his mail in the box and brought it to our house. I be damned once again. I can't believe little Mr. Helpful then bought this mail to my damn house. Well, he said I figured the husband want all his mail. Now, here's the good part about this. At least the mail was sitting at the post office and your husband never got the mail. You see? So your husband may have the perfect out right here. He may have the perfect out. Because, first of all, who still write letters? What is that? <laughs> How old are these people? <laughs> Who's still sending Christmas cards? So you know, all this can cards. be done on a computer now. Yeah, but people still well, send physical Christmas cards. They do. Old people. <laughs> send well, they have been married for Young years. people press a button and you open it up and it's Merry Christmas with explosions and all this here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Digital. He got a P.O. box and she still mailing letters. Do you know how old these people got to go? Because the lady said, we got our marriage back on track after the affair and I hadn't suspected anything else going on. She said, must be losing marriage. Well, somewhere in here you, she said she's talking about because. At the stage of our lives. At this stage mm -hmm. of our lives, mm -hmm. it's got to be a late stage. Mm -hmm. Cause who the hell is mailing letters in November 2023? Who? Who? I'm the oldest person on this show, and guess what? I ain't wrote a letter in I don't know <laughs> damn when. So anyway, anyway, the, the Maryland woman has sent a Christmas card to my husband saying she couldn't wait for him to jingle her bells. She sent another card with a picture of her and her dog on it. That was a credit card statement with charges 
made only in Maryland, and that was a cell phone bill. So I guess he got another phone. He swears he's not seeing her anymore. Should I believe him or should I go to Maryland with him next time? Can he be trusted? I love the mailman for doing this, but my husband wants him fired. Well, let me straighten you out on a couple of things right here. First of all, if the husband has not seen these letters, it could be because he don't care. He doesn't care. He don't care. And maybe she was sending the letters in hopes of getting him to care because I can't wait for you to jingle my bells. Here's a picture of me and the dog. But he done left that mail sitting down there at the mailbox. He is more than unconcerned about these letters because they've been piling up for a while, which I think is his perfect out to justify the statement he's not seeing her anymore because he left them letters down there and all you got is them letters. <sighs> now that credit card bill and, mm-hmm. and that uh, that phone bill hit mm-hmm. where you need to you need to find this. You say you guess it's a cell phone because you saw a bill. Well, where it's at? Where it's at? And if he ain't been down there in a while, he ain't got that bill, he ain't paid it, that cell phone ain't on no more. You can't not pay your cell phone bill. They cut that thing off. So I think, based on this letter right here, Mm -hmm. that he's clear. At least he has an alibi to go with. And what is that Which is all I can say. He ain't been down there. He don't care about her. He don't don't check the mail. He ain't paid his cell phone bill. He ain't seen this woman. He he had no communication with this woman. Where is the fact? where, Where do you see them communicating that? Him and the lady. Well, when he, how about when he went down there six times to visit his dad? You yourself. He was seeing her then. He was (laughs) seeing her then. But he said, "I'm not seeing her anymore." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said that. He did. And 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 letting that mail sit down there and not paying that cell phone bill is a good sign that he not. Mm -hmm. But he has seen her six times. <laughs> Minimum. <laughs> yeah, at least. Maybe his dad once. <laughs> well, he saw his daddy every time. Because mm-hmm. that'll be the alibi. Did you see right. your son? Yeah, he just left you. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, leave your comments on today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM and check us out on the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app where free never sounded so good. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. Junior, what you got? Uh, can I talk to Pippen? Because, you know, it's picking this, oh, this weekend. It's NFL <laughs> playoff week. I need What's to up, talk dude? to my boy Pippen. <laughs> Pippen. What's happening? I'm ready, too, man. Yeah. <laughs> man play. Pippen. Happy Come New Year, brother. First of all, happy New Year, Pippen. Yeah. Let's see what Hello. I see, everybody. Pippen. I need to see. <laughs> What's up, fella? What's up, What's up, Pippen, Tommy man? Tom? What's up, Pippen? Pippen? Find new pie. One of them noobs. One of them noobs is pretty. Them noobs, them noobs be stepping. They don't even be stepping. They just be leaning back, rubbing the back of their head and everything. I'm just like, hey, a bunch of pimps. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they just, Cabins and Noops is pimps. <laughs> yeah. All right, Pippin, what man. What you got, Junior? Here we yeah, go, man. Pimping is playoff, man. Wild card weekend. Here playoff. we go. Dolphins I got versus. all of them picked. Dolphins versus the Chiefs, man. Start not the game. Hey, man, I just, I hate to tell y'all this because Dave ain't going to understand it, but this ain't the Chiefs year, man. Dolphins. Uh-oh. Whoa. Oh, okay. Whoa. Oh, man. All right. Here we go, Pippin. Steelers. I'm up with the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steelers versus Bills. No, they can't do it. I love Tomlin. I really, really do. But the Bills, is. this is the Bills year, baby. Bills <laughs> it is. Here we go, Pippin. Rams versus Lions. Oh, man. Man, as much as I love Detroit, I Boy. got to pick them damn Detroit Lions. <laughs> I got <laughs> to. Thank you. But, I, but prepare yourself. But it is purely my love of Detroit. Yeah. But I'm scared of them, man. All right, Pippa, here we go, man. They had a hard second half of the season, man. The Eagles versus Buccaneers, man. They, they on the road, man, going to Tampa Bay. <laughs> Ain't no down about it. 
okay. it rough. It got rough at so the cute. backside in here, but they finna whoop their ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Silly okay. kids show up. Man. Packers versus Cowboys, Pimpin'. Woo. Man, you know what? Whoa. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say nothing right now, but I think the Cowboys finna win this thing right here. What? Man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just being real with you. Just being Cowboys. real with you. Here it is. Uh oh, here it goes. Browns and Drum Texas. roll. Uh-huh. Come on, you man. You already know. You don't Come need on, no man. damn drum roll for the <laughs> ass whooping the Texan finna take. <laughs> what? Okay. You, okay. You, you finna get drummed and rolled. That's what finna help me, y'all. You know, good and hell well, man. I mean, welcome to the playoffs and all this. Congratulations <laughs> yeah. to both of us, Cleveland yeah. and Houston. Congratulations. <laughs> but there yeah. can only be one winner, baby. And the Browns <laughs> is gonna win. And okay. y'all better hope. <laughs> to hell that Houston wins. See, if the Browns lose, I'm used to it. Yeah. It's yeah. new to y'all. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Junior. Yeah. Thank you, Pimpin. Coming up at the top of the hour, a woman lost her husband, but she wants him back after he's engaged to someone else, and she needs your advice, Steve, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, this is from, Steve, this is from Asia in Richmond. Over three years ago, she says, I accused my husband of cheating. I was angry and very mean to him. He maintained his innocence, but I did not want to hear it. After sleeping on the couch and being ignored for close to six months, he divorced me. He just got engaged, and I have not been able to sleep or eat because I never thought he would get a new girlfriend so fast. I thought he would come to his senses and beg me to take him back. But no, he's in love with someone else. I asked him to meet up so we could talk. He turned me down and said that he wanted to talk to me for months before our marriage ended. But I was unbelievably mean and shut him out. He said he never cheated and I had it all wrong. Now that I've had time to put things into perspective, I truly believe him. Is it too late to tell him that I'm sorry before he marries this other girl? He's my soulmate. Mm. Yeah. No, he's not. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Mm. You're, just, you're keeping yeah. it 100. No, he's not your soulmate. <laughs> yeah. You were convinced for six months he was a lying, cheating dog. You ignored him. You were incredibly mean to him. And he slept on the couch for six months. He tried to talk to you the entire time. You didn't believe him. Now, listen to me. I don't know what you think men are made out of. But what you cannot do is accuse us of something we didn't do, make us pay for something we didn't do, and then want to undo it. He gone. He gone. He engaged. Gone. He gone. He gone. He gone. This is a wrap. You can't get him Get him back. He don't want you back. Mm-hmm. No, he don't want you. You've come to your senses. Now you truly believe him. <sighs> she ran him away, huh? She did. Too late. Yeah, you right, drove him right, right about the crib. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh well. I don't feel sorry for her neither. No, you got. That's what you want. <laughs> she was wrong. I don't feel sorry for her. You know, that's what you do. Mm. And you know she, she cussed him out. Right. Ooh, she mm. cussed him. Oh, <laughs> she called him oh. everything, Tommy. <laughs> Boy, she called him everything. Child God. God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, sometimes mm. they get it wrong. Yep. All right, uh, we do have time for this one, Steve. This one's from Lacey in Detroit. Lacey says, I'm in law school and my boyfriend dropped out of law school to be a music producer and manager. This is not what we had planned, so I'm getting frustrated with him and our relationship. I want to be a ride-or-die type of chick, but he's asking me to lie to his dad when we go visit him this weekend. I told him I don't want to see his dad, and he told me that I don't support his dreams and I don't believe in him. Am I supposed supposed to be okay with lying to his dad for him? Well, that's not supporting his dream. That's lying to his daddy. Yeah. <laughs> right. See, you can't you can't get it twisted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not not supporting your dream. The woman don't want to lie to your daddy. Mm-hmm. See, she don't want to be in that part of it right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they they paying for law school. You you done dropped out to be a producer and a writer. Ain't wrote or produced a damn thing ever. <laughs> You know, I'm going to tell you something. (laughs) And this is not a knock on hip hop. 
But hip hop has made more millionaires than any other music genre that I know of in my lifetime. I'll be the first to admit that. Mm -hmm. And I was wrong about hip hop a long time ago. I thought it wasn't going to last. How stupid was that a statement, right? Which proves that hip hop don't need me to exist or thrive. But what hip hop has done, though, it has created the delusion that since it's just rapping, that it's not singing, where you really, really had to have talent. Being able to rhyme and talk got a lot of people thinking they talented and they ain't. All these little fools need to do is just look at Scarface's tiny desk and then go sit your ass down somewhere. <laughs> this ain't what you do. No, Scarface showed you how it go. This ain't what you do. Go sit your ass down somewhere. You ain't no music <laughs> producer and writer. All right, coming up 20 minutes after the hour. Dream we'll have killer. more of the Steve Harvey I'm Morning Show stupid right stupid after stuff. this. Crazy. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So Monday night's Emmy Awards will be hosted by Anthony Anderson, and it's the 75th anniversary of the Emmys. Uh, to celebrate, the show is bringing the cast of a few hit shows from the 90s on stage like the cast of Martin will be in the building. Yes, uh, yes. Nice. Martin Lawrence, Tisha Campbell, Tashina Arnold, and Carl Anthony Payne all together on stage at the Emmys. How cool nice. is that? <laughs> really? More in, more yes. in, yes. <laughs> I, I love, love that. that. Me too. Mm-hmm. The cast of Ally McBeal will also Ooh. be there, and a few other memorable casts will be reunited at the Emmys. So, Steve, you had a hit show in the late 90s, the Steve Harvey show, of course. Have the Emmys reached out to you? Are you and Sed and, and um, LaVita Alizé Jenkins? <laughs> Wendy you know, Raquel, Raquel well, Principal. Reached out too, we Principal Greer. <laughs> You know, good hell well they ain't reached out to us. We Aww, did the news. They haven't. Oh. Well, yeah. They should. Yeah, they they should. Because you they had a great should. show. We yeah, love it. Yeah, it was a very good show. He don't remember learning them Excuse lines. Me? He sold on. I, I, didn't, I didn't like none of the schedule. I don't like the schedule of sitcoms. It's too much damn work. There's too many people you got to answer to. You got to answer to the production company, the, produ- uh, the producers, the writers, the production company, the uh-huh. studio, and then the network. That's too many damn readings for me. Yeah, but, you know, think about a reunion. We love the show. Think about it. All right. Coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show, and we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Would you rather curse one particular person out today, one particular one, or would you rather pray for that person? <laughs> wow. Well, mm. talking about we cursing or we praying? What what are we doing? Huh? I'm a, I'm going uh, Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm going to pray. Do. I'm going yeah, to I'm going to pray for him. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this lifetime. Come on. You don't cuss out this. You don't get moved over to the prayer list. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know, switch sides. <laughs> no, Lord. If you on the cuss out list, it probably very a, rarely do you get moved over to the prayer list. You can't have a change of heart, Steve? <laughs> well, let me put it to you like this. If okay. you're on the cuss out list, uh-huh. mm-hmm. the only way I pray for you is if you yeah. get moved over to the sick and shut in. <laughs> mm. You got to be damn near on your way out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just keeping it 100, huh, Steve? Uh, <laughs> Tell it all right. Like would you I rather be? Way, dog. Uh, oh. would, would you rather be cross-eyed, or would you rather only be able to see straight ahead? So you got your cross-eyed, or you either see just straight ahead? Which oh, one? I got to see straight no, ahead. Give me straight ahead. I turn mm-hmm. my head. I can turn my head, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not finna be cocky. Uh, Tom, but you can only see straight ahead now. You can't nah. see to the side. None no, of that. I can turn my head. I you can, can turn, turn to the side, uh-huh. sure. Turn. I got good ass uh-huh. peripheral anyway. I, uh-huh. Who told you that? Yeah, They're cross eyed, blankety plank across the hall. Across the hall. Across the hall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nephew Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, would you, ra- would you, you rather. Black people got nicknames for you when you can't see good. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
disliked. Like we had this partner in my school. He was uh-huh. cross eyed. We used to call him Walleye. Oh, see. Walleye? Mm. Yeah, because one of his eyes was always looking at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Terrible. Would you rather sleep close to your wife in a queen bed or would you rather spread out in a king bed? Spread out. Spread it's out. Over her and over. Sure. Yeah. 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 Right. It don't it's matter. Hot. It don't matter. Sure. I could be able to add Metro. She's going to be right up under me. It don't matter where I'm at. Oh, that's sweet. Sweet. That's, you know. That's sweet. Yeah, that's going to stop, Junior. That's going to stop. Yeah. Don't, 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 <laughs> worry. Don't, don't worry about it. I've been looking at the flow. I've been looking yeah. at it. <laughs> You're going to get some relief real soon. Don't mm-hmm. worry. Don't even worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> See, we know mm. you're in a, queen, a king bed just because of your size, right? You can't handle a queen bed, right? It's too small for what you. What you saying? Tommy ain't got no queen bed? I got a king bed. I don't know what she's trying to say. I don't know what she's trying to say. I got it a damn like... king bed. <laughs> Wait for it. That's all I heard. <laughs> I just want you to know, Tommy, I didn't say it. All right, that's today's round of you What You Rather Than no Thanks, hate? guys. <laughs> Coming up at 49 hmm. minutes after the hour, we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are. Last break of the day on this Friday. We got to hey, say uh, happy Founders Day because tomorrow, you know, January 13th. We're going to do that ourselves. You're not Greek. No, I'm not. We were going to do that ourselves. Okay. Now, you don't Have tell me it. about it on the break and then jump in <laughs> and do it. You just told me on the break. You said, Steve. We got to say happy Founders Day. I said, okay, who is it? You said it's the Deltas. Uh-huh. I said, fine. Yeah. My daughter's is Deltas. Mississippi Monica's a Delta. Now let us do it, sure. Do it. Have at it. <laughs> mm. Go. Oh, y'all, what's happening? I don't know. No, I just, Shirley, me and Shirley, sometimes, sometimes, we just don't. <laughs> That's you. Know. That's not me. That just is you. Sometimes. It'd be you the one. Oh, but a shout out to the that Deltas. Is you. That is not me. The shout out Go to ahead. the Deltas. Delta yes. Sigma Theta. Happy Founders Day. Yay. Happy Founders Day. Woo woo. Yeah. Happy Founders What's the color of Monica? Is not red and white? Crimson, Crimson, Crimson and cream. And cream is what she's saying. Yeah. So you should have let me That's do the it. same color. <laughs> oh. Anyway, Happy Founders Day. <laughs> Oh, that was exciting. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. No, it's Happy Founders Day. <laughs> happy Founders Day to Brandy, Carly, uh, Morgan, uh, Mississippi Monica. Mm-hmm. And all the uh, Deltas. My daughters of Deltas. Uh-huh. All the Deltas out there listening. Uh-huh. Happy Founders Day. But they Ladies. damn daddy, though. Mm. <laughs> Oh, that's on, why you make, wanted to. You finna to make this oh, about you on their Founders Day? Yeah. <laughs> now it no, makes No, I was sense. just saying. I didn't say nothing. I just said, but they damn daddy, though, mm-hmm. since we talking about Founders. <laughs> but you ain't playing <laughs> Delta, though. You <laughs> ain't no Delta. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh look who coming to the defense oh, of the Deltas. The dude that's got the same colors as they got. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is this attitude you have? My bad. <laughs> This is called Greek love, surely. <laughs> uh, so I was talking about yesterday in my closing remarks about distractions and how it can be uh, a detriment to your uh, rise to the top. And I said I'd have part two because I had so much more to say. But I guess where I left off at, I was in a pretty cool place. But let me just add a couple of things, man. When people, when the devil is throwing opposition at your dreams, your visions, your goals, when he's throwing opposition, he's very tricky. He tries to use the thing that's dearest to you and closest to you as the tool of distraction. And like I was saying yesterday, one of the biggest tools that the devil will use and has his imps who are working for him. And you all know some of the devil's imps that work for him. We all have people that we've known in our life around us that seem to be on full time, 24 hour call for BS, 24 hour call for garbage and trash. Have you ever had a person in your life that always brought you bad news? I mean, man, you could be going along. Yeah, I'm calling you to see if you okay. Yeah, I'm good, though. 
Well, you know, I was just wondering how you felt about what all they saying. Well, damn, I was actually going along pretty good today and hadn't even really given any thought to what anybody was saying, but now you on the phone with it. You've got to be conscious of people like that. If there's a person who is constantly bringing you bad news, that person is a distraction. You need to eliminate this distraction. If you have a person in your aura, in your space, that is not behind you and for you 100%, they don't need to occupy your space. I'm telling you, man, if you got people in your life that's cool over here, but they ain't cool over here, you can bring them in this situation, but you got to keep them out of that situation. That's too much work. That's too much work. I only have a few friends. I, God willing, on my next birthday will be 67 years old. Fly as hell now. I do understand that. I'm really, really that. I'm really that dude. That's how I feel about myself. Now, you ain't got to feel that way, but the Bible says a man is as he thinking. <laughs> that's what I think. So guess what? I'm assuming that's what I am. That's why I say it. But I have decided in this 67 years almost that I only have a handful of friends. People say, man, you've been living all this long and all you got is a few friends. Well, when you really shake the tree out, you'd be surprised who fall out that thing if, it, if the tree just starts shaking, if the wind blow hard. I judge my friends by moments of uh, 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 severe trial and tribulation. I don't pick my friends in com moments of comfort and convenience. I don't pick friends because they're good when the sun's shining. I pick my friends in the thunderstorm. I pick my friends in the blizzard. I pick my friends when the tidal wave come along. Because when they come along, if they don't run and when it all get finished, they still there. That's who my friends are. And if you start doing like that, you'll find out you have very, very few. It's amazing to me sometimes how I listen to my kids. I got a lot of friends. I be telling them all the time, no, you don't. Well, they starting to learn it now. They starting to learn it now. But listen to me. Surround yourself with positive people. Stop, stop letting people bring stuff to you that's not beneficial. Stop allowing people to bring up your past to remind you of what you were. I am not that person anymore. I'm gone. As a matter of fact, you are now gone. Bye. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. That's all. Those are my closing remarks. That's part two. I feel good about it. God willing. Hey, listen, y'all have a great weekend, okay? Take care of yourself. I'll talk to y'all, uh, God willing, on Monday morning. Peace. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 